was certainly present at all the eight, at least seven or six. Mr. Valer, did the children leave camp willingly, easily? No. No. C'était la plupart du temps aussi une une affreuse opération. Usually, this was a terrible le matin, à 5 heures du job. Matin, they would wake them at 5 in the morning. On leur donnait le café. They would be given coffee. Il était mal réveillé. Il était mal disposé. À 5 heures du matin, même au mois d'août, à Paris, il fait encore très obscur. C'est presque la nuit encore. Et quand on voulait les, les, les faire descendre dans la cour, la plupart du temps, c'était très difficile. They were half asleep. Even in August in Paris, five in the morning is almost night and it is dark. The children would be made to come down to the courtyard, all mixed up. De faire descendre d'abord les plus âgés, mais plusieurs fois il est arrivé que les enfants commençaient à pleurer, à se débattre. Il était impossible de les faire descendre dans la cour de la, du camp. Et alors, c'était les gendarmes qui montaient dans les chambres qui prenaient dans leurs bras les enfants qui se débattaient et qui hurlaient et qui les descendaient dans la cour. The voluntary women would try to help the children come down and to bring them down. First, the older ones, they would try to persuade them, but they did not always succeed. Children would start crying, weep, quarrel, resist, and then the police would go upstairs and take the weeping children, the resisting children, carry them down in their arms forcibly into the yard. Judge Landau, Mr. Bach, will this testimony be completed before our recess? Mr. Bach, uh, I think I only have one question and this will be the point where we can make a break. And then we'll speak about uh, the chapter of Alex Brunner who followed Redke, it's an important chapter. Alois Brunner is the name. The name. Let me just ask you this, Mr. Veller. In 1944, when you came to Auschwitz, did you then see any one of these children alive? Est-ce qu'à cette époque, vous avez vu quelques-uns de ces enfants encore vivants que vous avez rencontrés avant Oh non, évidemment pas. No, no. No, I did not. Judge Halevi, all of them. They were taken out of the transport. Mr. Baror, let's go back to yourself. What happened with you? Then my turn came. I went over to one of the SS men and I said, my uh, mother is terribly sick, she can't possibly stay without me, please leave me here. Then he said to me, go out, get off my sight, this is what he said. And uh, the, this is how it came. This, uh, then I um, arrived at a hall, then there was no contact anymore with the outside world. And there I succeeded in bringing a message on a slip of paper to my mother. And I said, Mother, hold out. If you manage to do so, follow me. I'm going to a labor camp. Follow me. I can certainly look after you. Do your best and come. And I know people from Denmark told me that my mother indeed was attached to the next transport. Mr. Or when was that? I have never heard about her after the war. Mr. Baror, where were you taken in this transport? I arrived at Auschwitz. How long did you stay there? I stayed there in block number one at the beginning. 
About 10 days. Mr. Baro, you then left Auschwitz? Yes, correct. Where to? That was still in October of 1944. Yes, it was October 1944. I was sent to Dachau. And then you stayed in Dachau from October 1944 until the liberation by the Americans? Uh, then so I was staying in some of the camps attached to Dachau because Dachau was the general term. Uh, we arrived in Dachau, but later on we were sent to some of the branches Mr. of Dachau. Ba Mr. Ansbacher, tell us briefly now about your main impressions from Dachau. In Dachau, uh, we, were, no, we had already passed through a school, as it were. We were in Auschwitz already, and we knew that we had to learn about the situation. How old were you when you reached Dachau? When I arrived at Dachau, I was 17 years old. Mr. Baror, well, you had to learn the situation. What was it? The situ we had to know where blows are dealt, uh, where one has to stand in order to avoid blows, where the kitchen is, where work is easier. Of course, it took some time. In the meantime, we were being beaten up all the time. And uh, uh, when we went from the train, uh, where we were received by the SS men at night, this was always at night, and we were moving in fog and darkness, then uh, we saw a group of SS men looming out and they were reading the Juden go through the Red Sea, the waves close in, and the world is happy, the Jews are drowned. This is what the SS men were singing. It had been translated peace for the world, Mr. Bar-Or. We knew that something was in store for us. Then the blows were showered upon us. Uh, they were dealing those blows right and left with rifle butts, uh, with clubs of the capo who were accompanying the SS group. This is how we were brought to the camp. Uh, then in the camp, uh, we were presented for roll call. We knew what roll call was already from Auschwitz. There we were standing until they would tell us enough. We were left there the whole night. We had to stand there, controlled by the Gestapo, uh, supervised by Gestapo and the Gestapo men and the coppers. Everybody was standing stark naked. Uh, we were told that now we had a roll call and uh, uh, it was necessary to know for the SS men what was the condition of everybody concerned. Judge Landa, when was that? It was in November. We couldn't leave the place, of course. Uh, we couldn't uh, arrange our physiological needs. Uh, and very often uh, people were in a horrible uh, situation because there was ice and frost and sleet and in the morning the SS men arrived and they began the roll call, they began to count several times and each time they uh, found that there was some sort of an error. They said, uh, we sh you should uh, see to it that everybody is present, otherwise we'll not let you go. Part of the people in line fell down, fainted, uh, uh, others of course couldn't heed what happened and had to stand at attention. And then the SS men asked, how many are still left. We were not allowed to speak. Some began to, s to speak. Some began to whisper to their friends. And then blows were showered again. Then they said, back to the blocks. Then they were again hurried, by, wrapped by the Gestapo. Hurry up, hurry up. This is what we heard all the time. And we were herded to blocks under a rain of blows. These were not the same blo blocks as in Auschwitz. The blocks were damp. 
they were uh, really no blocks at all. Uh, there were some sort of pits, we, I would call it, and on the sides, uh, simply on the ground people were lying. There were no blankets at all. We were told you were staying here until further orders. We didn't get any food, we didn't get any um, water. Uh, of course, the supply of uh, bread ran out and uh, most of the people were extremely weak and uh, found it extremely difficult to hold out. Mr. Baror, how long did it take from Auschwitz to Dachau? The transport from Auschwitz to Dachau took a few days. During the journey we didn't get any food at all. Only in Auschwitz when we arrived, um, everybody was given a loaf of bread. And uh, uh, we were then pushed into cattle trains, and at the strains of an orchestra which was accompanying us, we entered those ghost trains, and uh, it was absolutely impossible to uh, get water. water. We would just uh, 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 open the windows occasionally and get some drops of the falling grain as water. In Dachau, we stayed uh, until uh, we were being detailed Barrow, to work. What work were you assigned to? I was detailed to all sorts of work. The first work I was detailed to was in the uh, Potash uh, stations, as it were. I didn't know what it was. I approached the commando, and uh, there there was work. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, cement uh, works, and uh, we were working there all the time for about 24 hours. We were not at all sent back, and I had to bring sacks of uh, um, cement uh, running. I should have done it uh, running and uh, had to walk about 30 miles to the station where the uh, cement was uh, loaded. All the time we were hurried by the uh, SS officers. I was cold. I took one of these cement bags. I used it as a shirt. I only had a very thin shirt which I had with from Auschwitz. I had no underwear. And the socks I had was made out of prayer shawls. And our boots were wooden boots, wooden shoes, which in the course of time I did not want to use. They rubbed my feet. But most of the people, uh, I myself walked barefooted. In that commando, fortunately, in this cement detail, why after 24 hours I was transferred away, I cried all night, but this did not help. Nothing helped. They said, whoever is placed here will die here. On the next day I was taken to other types of work. Usually we again studied the situation and concluded that it was desirable that two, three comrades should always stay together. People were egotistical, very egotistical. And we knew that if we hold out together, two or three, maybe we can survive. And there was one boy who came with me from Theresienstadt. Lider was his name. This boy walked with me, and this is how we went out to work every day together. Usually we managed to stay together in the commando. These were types of various types of work, construction work for the mall company. We had to build these huge buildings where they intended to hide munitions and fuel. That was for the military, of course. The way to work and back, that was a chapter for itself. Uh, there was a spotted typhus, I understand, which broke up, uh, broke out in the camp. When did it occur? Fleck typhus. No, not this type of typhoid fever. It was paratyphoid. It was regular typhoid fever. I had that. Uh, uh, stomach typhoid fever, which I had in Theresienstadt, 
Uh, this was the type of fever everybody got it uh, as a result of uh, bed bugs. We looked like animals. Nobody could shave. We were in a situation of complete neglect. We were not allowed to wash. Even if there was water, it was so very cold that it was impossible to wash because it would tear the skin apart. Uh, what was the mortality rate? Witness, the mortality rate was quite considerable. I would say hundreds of people. And the proof was that at the beginning of the, at the entrance to the camp, there was a huge pile of bodies where the totem commando would just pile them one on top of the other. And even before that typhoid epidemic, when the death rate was not so big, they just buried them in mass graves. And later they did not even bother to bury the people. They left them on these piles just there outside. I see. And there was a man in the camp whose task it was to extract the gold teeth from the bodies. Could you tell me, when did you leave Dachau? I left Dachau, it was shortly before the liberation. Uh, more or less when? Did you speak to Hermann Goering in the course of your investigation? I did. Did the subject of atrocities uh, come into the conversation with Goering, and if he did, what did he say? Did he say anything about He said <coughs> that he was not aware that the program of Jewish extermination had reached the reported proportions. <coughs> And the persons mostly responsible for that program were Hitler, Bormann, Goebbels, Heydrich, and Eichmann. Ken Amar שהאנשים הנוסעים ברוב האחריות לעניינים אלה היו היטלר, בורמן, גבלס, היידריש ואיישמן. האם הזכיר? כן, כמובן, את הימלר, כמובן. Can you mention other people who were close to Hitler uh, who spoke of Eichmann? Yes. Anashim Acherim. Anashim Who were they? Ribbentrop, Carlton Brunner, Hans Frank, Walter Schellenberg, General Karl Koller, and others. Ken, are you a Ribbentrop, Kaltenbrunner, Frank, Schaumberg? Schellenberg. Schellenberg. And the last one? And others. General Karl Kohler, the Achirin. What did Ribbentrop say about Eichmann? Mama Ribbentrop, about Eichmann. Ribbentrop said that he resented very much Eichmann's interference in his Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ribbentrop Amar Shechara lo heitev ki Eichmann hitarev beinyanei ministerion hachutz shelo. He said also that he was very sorry that Hitler had put so much authority into Eichmann in the program of Jewish extermination. Ken Amar Shechar hayalo meod ki Hitler נתן סמכות כה רחבה בידיו של אייכמן 
באשר לתוכנית השמדתם של היהודים. מה אמר קלטנברונר על אייכמן? קלטנברונר אמר קלטנברונר אמר שהאנשים שעמדו בראש מבצע השמדת היהודים היו היטלר, בורמן, הימלר, היידריש ואייכמן. What did Hans Frank say on the subject of atrocities? Hans Frank said that during the latter part of the war, he decided to wade in blood no longer. So he went to see Himmler to complain and to ask that the slaughter of the Jews cease. Himmler told him that at that time he was very busy with a military assignment which had, given, had been given to him by Hitler and he recommended that Frank talk to Eichmann. אנס פרנק אמר כי בשלהי מלחמת העולם לא רצה עוד כי ידיו תהיינה מגועלות בדם. הוא פנה אל הימלר והתלונן וביקש לחדול מטבח היהודים. השיב לו הימלר שעסוק הוא מאוד במבצע צבאי שהוטל עליו על ידי היטלר והמליץ בפניו שידבר עם אייכמן. According to him, to Frank, did he talk to Eichmann? לפי yes. דבריו של פרנק זה, האם דיבר עם אייכמן? כן. Yes. He... Frank said he talked 